I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab, and today in the lab I've got Frank from TW Solar. Hi, <laughs> hi, Glenn. Hi, Frank. It's great to have you here. Thank now, you. Um, you've travelled from China to Australia recently. Yeah. What was the purpose of your trip? Um, you know, to expand some business opportunities because uh, TW Solar is our module brand, and uh, we have uh, our our distribution market well done here. So we we just want to more opportunities and want our brand to be known in this market more. Now, for the audience, probably not many people in Australia have heard of TW Solar, but actually you've been in business a long time. Yeah, exactly. Actually, uh, TW Solar is uh, has more than 40 years of history, and uh, we are a brand, uh, the TW is a PV brand under the Tongwei Group. And Tongwei Group is a very versatile listed company. We have two main businesses. We have a, a aquatic feed, a fishery, and the other is the renewable energy like the PV industry. And we have a fully ver vertically integrated industrial chain from the upstream polysilicon capacity to the middle stream uh, solar cells and then to the downstream uh, solar panels. So we are the only vertically integrated manufacturer right now now in this industry. Before we start talking about TW Solar, mm -hmm. so um, TW Group, um, the aquatic business, what's, what, what do you do with that? Actually, um, Tongwei was established uh, in 1982, and we start from the fishery. And, uh, um, you know, we have a, a fish brand called Tongwei Fish, which is very, um, you know, uh, high high premier, high-end brand in the Chinese market. and. Uh, uh, we, we have a very high quality fish product and we have been doing this for more than 40 years. And then we moved to the aquatic feed and to help people to raise uh, fish. And then in 2006, we entered the PV industry. So now we have both green food and green energy. Is there a bit of crossover? Is uh, some TW Solar on your uh, fish farms? <laughs> to some extent. <laughs> we, we even in the downstream, in the end user market, we have some projects combining our fisheries and also our PV projects. So we raise fish uh, uh, under the water and then we generate power above the water. Right. Yeah. So in, in your um, TW Solar um, canteen, do you have uh, Tongwei fish on the menu? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. And you mentioned before that, there, that you described them as a green um, aquatic business. What, mm -hmm. what, what makes it green? Um, because our... F um, Actually, Tongwei has a lot of experience in raising fish and uh, also teach people how to breed fish um, with aquatic feed. And uh, the way we're doing is very uh, in a green way. So we just uh, breed the fish in a natural way without any chemicals and uh, we let them grow in a natural si uh, life cycle. So it would take longer time for us to get one uh, Tongwei fish. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's very natural and green and high quality and people love to taste the, the Tongwei fish. Cool. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm asking you this because it's interesting that the company has made this transition from yeah. the aquatic industry into the solar. What uh, was the reason for that move? I think it's um, the insight of the, <laughs> of the owner, uh, of the um, founder of the company. Uh, he saw some... Uh, business opportunity in the PV industry uh, by the time of 2006. Uh, uh, he, uh, our chairman Liu, started the uh, polysilicon mm -hmm. production. And uh, then after all these years, our polysilicon capacity had become, uh, become the biggest. Um, and also uh, in 2013, we just acquired a solar cells factory and we started the production of the solar cells as well. And after all these years development, we have become the top one in both polysilicon and in solar cells. And mm -hmm. they are actually um, related to the, to the uh, aquatic feed because uh, aquatic, aquatic feed is some byproducts from the polysilicon manufacturing as well. Yeah, so they're some kind of uh, related to each other. Wow, so okay. It's not a, a sudden jump. <laughs> yeah. Now, for those in the audience who are not familiar with the terminology, so when you say polysilicon, you're not talking about just the cells, it's the actual raw material. Mm -hmm. and, and so do you process that? 
yeah, we process the whole uh, supply chain of the uh, panel manufacturing. So uh, in the upstream, we have polysilicon, which is the raw material of wafer. And uh, we also have some wafer capacity and we uh, use wafer to produce solar cells, which is the raw material of the panel. So panel is actually the assembly of the um, solar cells. And Tongwei or TW Solar is the largest one in producing polysilicon and also solar cells. So we uh, we have been behind the scene for, for years and now we come to the front stage and to, to produce our own panel brand as well. So you make cells that other companies put in their panels? Yes. So people may already have TW Solar sure. on their roof but don't know it. Sure. <laughs> I think one third of the, um, the panels produced in, the, in all past years are using uh, P uh, TW Solar cells. And uh, we now, even for now, we are still supplying to a uh, big all the top 10 so, uh, solar panel manufacturers with TW solar cells. And uh, uh, we are selling our solar cells, but uh, most of the capacity is now for own use. So because everyone in, the, in this industry is trying to be vertically integrated, but TW solar is actually now the only one because we have uh, all the sectors in this industry chain. And, uh, but we, we are still the biggest uh, solar cells manufacturer. Therefore, we, we sell our solar cells and also we consume our own solar cells. But for our own panel, we will only select the best parts of the TW solar cells <laughs> yes. to make our own panel. So in a way, you're a bit like AMD and Intel. You're, you're the magic that yeah, happens inside. Exactly. Not the brand on the outside sometimes, yeah. but now you are the brand on the outside as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's the vertical integration. So yeah. you, you're in full control of the whole production. Yeah. And with the whole uh, industrial chain, we have the cost advantage. So, and we can supply sufficient quantity to to all our customers and we have a very comprehensive portfolio because we produce all sizes of solar cells and all types of solar cells like the p type and n type which is popular recently and even within the n type we also produce two um, types like the top count technology and the hjt technology so basically our panels also uh, covers all these need uh, demands so you're both covering the smaller form factor like the 415 yeah. behind yeah. us, um, which is more suitable for the residential market because yeah. it's only like 20 yeah. kilos. Yeah. yeah, it's 20 And kilo. it's 1.7 metres roughly long, which is one of those considerations when you put them on yeah. roofs these days. And but you also do utility scale. So. Yeah, exactly. I think the small one, the 415, is the best choice for the residential rooftop right now. Even for the new type uh, coming soon with N-type, we adopted the same size. So still 20 kilos. So it's very easy to lift. I'm looking forward to installing these. Uh, we're actually doing a project here at the lab. Uh, it's a partnership with OSW who yeah. organized it um, with various players, including yeah. TW Solar. Yeah. So that, that'll be uh, linked up here in, in the, uh, the channel later on. Yeah, because TW Solar has uh, cooperated with the four distributors in the Australian market. So OSW is one of them, and of course also one of the biggest. And uh, we have uh, shipped the 415 panels to them, and uh, now they are available on the Australian market right now. And soon we are going to introduce our N-Type 440 wards as well. And so you can, yeah. You can, you get, get so them from the OSW. You'll have two sure. sort of main products through your distributors, so mm -hmm. the 415 P-Type and the yeah. 440 N-Type. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's the difference? Why would you choose one versus the other? Actually, it's um, the choice of the whole industry mm -hmm. because we are shifting from P-Type to N-Type right now. P means perk, uh, monoperk, which is the um, previous technology. But now uh, mm -hmm. everyone is trying to uh, move to N-Type because N-Type has higher... Uh, upper limit on efficiencies so it can create more power generations so basically within the same dimension uh, we can jump from 415 to 440 watts directly so like the, there are 25 watts bonus but with the same exact uh, the, the panels and uh, the the price is also very cost effective very competitive Yes, it's just amazing how panel power ratings have gone up in the last decade. Like, yeah. uh, you know, personal story here, I'm actually on the standards committee mm -hmm. and when we wrote the PV standard, uh, sort of the inverter standard, we mentioned microinverters as having an upper limit of 350 watts. Yeah. By the way, that's gone now. That 350 watt limit is gone in the new <laughs> version of, 50, yeah. uh, of, uh, of uh, the, the PV standard. But the thing was that... Um, 
we never thought panels would get that big. Back 10 years ago, yeah. they were 150 watt, and we thought maybe we'll get to 250. Yeah. And now you can't even buy a 250 watt panel. Yeah. yeah. So PV technology <laughs> changes so fast. And people want more power on their roof because it's cheap, clean energy. Yeah. Uh, their roof is their main resource. They want to use it most efficiently as possible. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a little look. I've got the data sheet up here for sure. the 415s. Um, yeah. Now, some of the numbers that people often want to know when they're uh, designing a system is, for instance, you know, putting panels in series, uh, you want to know what the, the VOC is. Uh, so I see that these have a modest VOC around a 38.08 mark. Yeah. Yep. And of course, there'll be a temperature compensation factor for that, which mm -hmm. you need to apply, um, which will be kind of related to the temperature coefficient. So we look at the temperature coefficient for open circuit voltage, it's extremely small, 0.26. Yeah. <laughs> now, for those who are not geeks on solar panels, that number really matters. It's basically how much change there'll be in voltage due to temperature, but also um, the power max as well, that figure mm -hmm. that you're not losing so much power. It's 0.34% yeah. per degree Celsius for power. Now, those yeah. numbers 10 years ago were 0.45, right? So yeah. we're actually getting more out of the panels just by improving the coefficient for temperature. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's really good. Yeah, and our panel work in a very low um, uh, temperature. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's also due to the, the, the low temperature efficiency. Yes, yeah, so the VOC not going too high when it's mm -hmm. cold, because yeah. it's quite cold here today. Um, yeah. It was only four degrees this morning, but I think it's warmed yeah. up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the other thing that I often look at is uh, the uh, short circuit current rating. Now these have a, a 13.8 amp short circuit rating, mm -hmm. and because in Australia under 5033, we have to put the 1.25 multiplier factor on top of that for cable ratings and also for uh, ISC rating of the input to the inverter. That means you're going to need an inverter with about a 17 amp uh, input rating. Now, that's mm -hmm. not a problem anymore. It was a yeah. year or two ago. So that's a very nice number. Now, these are half cut cells. So I can see behind yeah. me. Yeah, that's the half cut. Yeah. Now, what's the advantage of having half cut cells? Actually, because um, uh, in the previous time we, we adopted a full cell, and so with the smaller solar cell size, but for when, when the solar cell size become bigger and people start to think that uh, um, by half cutting them, uh, we can reduce the resistance and also therefore can increase the current um, to some extent. So um, overall by adopting half cut, it can um, increase five to 10 watts um, Compared to the full, uh, compared to the full solar cells in the in the past, so it's like um, a very considerable increase in the power output by adopting half cat. Yeah, it's it's almost like a sleight of hand of of Ohm's law, because yeah. power is I squared R, so yeah. current squared times resistance. Yeah, and so that small reduction in resistance actually has a big impact in in in, in reducing losses. Yeah, so yeah. that's a very clever concept, is to basically have. Um, more current paths, but mm -hmm. you've also got more shade tolerance, I believe. Yes. The fact that you've now got effectively like six sub modules that can work independently, like the six current paths uh, yeah. within the panel. Yes. And so shading on one section doesn't affect quite so much yeah, of the panel. Yeah, that, that's what we call a serial and parallel design. Yeah. So, uh, it's some certain areas, if some certain areas is covered by shade, uh, it will not affect the other areas functioning. Yeah, right. Now, I assume um, these are 1500 volt rated, so you know they'll work with uh, basically any size system here in Australia. Yeah. Uh, and you've got a maximum series fuse rating of 25 amps. Yeah. Now that's you know, that's up there. That's mm -hmm. that's a nice number. Yeah. Because that certainly if you're doing parallel strings, that number starts to be important. Because mm -hmm. uh, with our standards, 5033 requires to have string over current protection when the ratio of ISC to series fuse rating gets to a certain point. And mm -hmm. that, that really helps, meaning two strings, fine. We might even be able to do three. I haven't done the sums on that without yeah. going to fusing. So that's a, a really nice number. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just coming back to um, your presence in Australia, you're being distributed through four different distributors at the moment. Um, yeah. So OSW being the biggest of those. And um, shout out to OSW for organizing today. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, <laughs> Yeah, that's been great. Um, and uh, you'll be expanding your range from the 415 P-type to 440 yeah. N-type. Yeah, And exactly. probably beyond. 
yeah, maybe beyond in, in the future because uh, this industry has um, you know very fast development on on the technical roadmap. And uh, for all these years, the solar cell size and also the technology has been changing. And even for the end type, like I just mentioned, we are also exploring the heterojunction cells technology, which we call HJT. And hopefully by the end of this year, we are going to introduce a totally brand new technology with uh, with the same size of the panel. Wow. Yeah. Okay, you better explain that one. So heterojunction meaning more than one junction. So you're getting two bites of the cherry? Uh, yeah. Yep. But the heterojunction cell is another type of uh, under the N-type solar cells technology, but it has a, a higher upper limit on the efficiencies and it can uh, the wafer of the heterojunction cell is thinner. So overall it can be uh, uh, more cost effective in, when we're talking about the producing um, uh, power. Yeah. Right. So uh, this means out of the same footprint, the same physical size, you'll be getting more. Yeah, more exactly. Power. Um, um, by adopting heterojunction cells, the power output can exceed 440 even. Right. Well, that's great. Yeah. Cool. Well, Frank, um, it's really been good learning about TW Solar. And like I said, I'm excited by the project. We're going to be yeah. installing a uh, an array here. I think it's about eight kilowatts. Uh, yeah. And it's going to be used for EV charging. So it's going to be green, green and green. <laughs> yeah, very green. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Cool. Thank you so much. Bye.